Hi, I'm Professor Wiener, and today we're going to be talking about Imperial China. Imperial China was an ancient civilization of immense sovereignty and elegance, with its population of tens of millions and vast borders stretching far within the continent of Asia. Lots of important innovations and events took place here that have changed humanity. From writing, to religious philosophies, to city plans and trade wealth, China has created many influences that gave it much power in the ancient world, and a strong legacy is still, still seen today. Ancient Imperial China began its existence in the year 221 BC with the rise of Qin Shi Huangdi as the first emperor of China. This occurrence follows the Warring States period, a time of brutal war among the major kingdoms throughout China. One of these seven kingdoms was the Qin, and its ruler, Qin Shi Huangdi, managed to conquer all kingdoms and create unity. Qin Shi Huangdi's empire lasted for only a few years before the Han Dynasty took over in 206 BC and remained in power for several hundred years. The Xin Dynasty existed briefly from AD 8 to AD 23, but then were eclipsed once more by Han emperors until AD 220. The Xin Dynasty acts as an interregnum, dividing the Han reign into Western Han from 206 BC to AD 8, and Eastern Han from AD 25 to AD 220. The total time span of the Imperial China period is roughly 400 years and took place around the turn of the era. Chinese civilization was located in the vast majority of East Asia. On the western side, China reached all the way to the Himalayas and Tibet, mountainous regions in the middle portion of Asia. The east of China extended along the Pacific coast where the modern day East China Sea, South China Sea, and Yellow Sea are. Much of Imperial China was centered along the Huanghe or Yellow River in the north. Notable sites are the capital of the Qin Empire, Xiangyang, and the capitals of the Han Empire, Chang'an and Luoyang. In addition to these major cities, several other settlements can be found around this river, as well as the Yangtze River in the south. During the imperial period of China, territorial expansion occurred. As can be seen on this map, a notable amount of land was gained by China between the Qin and Han dynasties. This can be widely attributed to the expansionist emperors like the Han Emperor Wu Di. The environment in ancient China widely affected the, the lifestyle of the people there. Due to the large area that it takes up, China had several different terrains and climates. In the north, for example, one can find a more arid environment near the Eurasian steppes. It is in this area that the threat of attack from nomadic groups existed, which was one of the reasons for the construction of the Great Wall. Because of the dry conditions here, millet agriculture thrived, as seen from plant remains in the region, since the crop did not need much irrigation. Further south, China's climate is much more tropical allowing for wet agriculture of rice. Um, since the weather was a lot wetter in this area, southern China experienced monsoon cycles. Though potentially damaging to settlements there, this feature greatly benefited Imperial China by creating easy sea travel throughout southern Asia. There are several characteristics of Imperial China that allowed it to be considered a state-level society. One of these attributes is a writing system, which actually has its origins from the Shang Dynasty that, in, that inhabited northern China over a thousand years prior through oracle bones and bronze vessels. Prior to the Han Dynasty, writing was restricted to the social um, elite. However, this changed when the Han standardized Chinese script for administrative purposes, allowing for an expansion of literacy and uses of writing throughout the empire. Another aspect of state-level society featured in Imperial China is agriculture, where millet and rice were among the staple crops in the civilization. Next is population. Imperial China was one of the earliest states in the world to take a population census, allowing archaeologists to understand the size of the state. A census from 88 estimates nearly 59,600,000 citizens in the Han Dynasty. This notable density of settlement is evidence of a civilization. Finally, social stratification was another feature that provides insight to the complexity of China. It is clear that an emperor resided at the top of the social pyramid, ruled over several smaller kingdoms owned by the Han elite. Further evidence of an aristocracy is found in burial sites lavishly decorated with grave goods, an example being the tomb of Lu Sheng, whose body was excavated laden in jade and gold. Unequal distributions of wealth from trade allowed for even more social complexity. Imperial China had many connections to other polities. Due to trade routes along the coast of Asia, as well as along the Silk Road, China interacted with civilizations as close as Southeast Asia and all the way down to the Mediterranean. This relationship is seen from archaeological finds of Chinese silk and Han's bronze mirrors throughout the Old World. 
Much trade was conducted with India and Southeast Asia, leading to the transfer of Chinese ideas about statehood and warfare into these areas. A major external influence on China was the arrival of Buddhism from India into the Han China from the Silk Road. Imperial China was responsible for the formation of the secondary states of Korea and Japan, who developed complexity after interaction with the Han. For Korea, the remnants of Han commanderies, notably that of Li Long, spread Chinese influence throughout the Korean peninsula, where Korea adopted government ideas from its interaction with China. Japan's envoy interaction with Luoyang, China, and adoption of Chinese script are another example of second state formation. As you can see, Imperial China is a very vast, complex civilization. It came to existence in 221 BC after Qin Shi Huangdi proclaimed himself the first emperor of China. This began the reign of the Qin Empire, later followed by the Han and Xin empires. Spread throughout a large portion of mainland China, seated between the Himalayas, Eurasian steppes, and East China Sea, Imperial China enjoyed a wide assortment of climates. Northern China, for example, was arid, while southern China was more wet and tropical. This allowed for a variety of crops to be grown, including rice and millet. Agriculture enabled civilization, which is evident in Imperial China in several forms, including standardized writing, substantial population, and social stratification. A booming economy was widely due to China's interaction with other polities. Trade relations with India, Southeast Asia, and Mesopotamia were some of the most important of these. The rise in power in China allowed for the spread of its culture all throughout Asia, parts of Europe, and even resulted in the secondary state formation of Japan and Korea.